in the last class we are discussing fugacity we know that fugacity is a measure of non ideality okay today we will start with how we can calculate fugacity fugacity we defined by f function of pressure and temperature so we will consider the following scheme so it is like real gas at constant temperature and pressure and goes to ideal gas At, const at the same temperature and pressure and the change uh, in free energy, if we say this is delta G 1 bar. Now, we can consider a different path. So, basically we will consider a real gas at constant temperature and pressure and when P goes to 0, if we keep the temperature fixed, we will, we will obtain a real gas at temperature T and when P goes to 0, which is nothing but uh, ideal gas at temperature T, P goes to 0 and then uh, we will increase the pressure of the ideal gas from P goes to 0 to P goes to P. So, and the free energy change for this path means ideal gas at temperature T where P goes to 0 to ideal gas at temperature T and P goes to P. For that process, the free energy change is delta G bar 3 we say. Okay. So, in the above scheme, delta G bar 1 is nothing but delta G bar 2 plus delta G bar 3, right. Okay. So, what is delta G bar 1? Okay. So, delta G bar 1 now delta G bar 1 is nothing but Okay, so, it goes from real gas to ideal gas. So, delta G bar 1 is nothing but G bar ideal at temperature and at T and P minus G bar at temperature T and P. Okay. So, we can write this as like this okay r t l n p by p naught minus r t l n f by f naught okay and suppose this is our equation 1 here okay but the standard state of the real gas has chosen such that f naught equals to p naught right equals to 1 bar. Okay. Thus, we can write
and this is our suppose equation 2. So, from there we can write. So, so equation 1 now is modified to R T L n P Y F. Okay. Now, let us see what is delta G bar 2. Delta G bar 2 is nothing but when P changes from P equals to P to P equals to 0, okay, when P goes to 0 like this. Okay. And what is delta G bar 3? So, delta G bar 3 Now, we know delta G bar 1 equals to delta G bar 2 plus delta G bar 3, 3 right. Again, we have again, again, again we know right. So, we can write so, we know delta G bar 1 equals to delta G bar 2 plus delta G bar 3. So, now if we substitute all these uh, above expressions here, we get R t. So, delta G bar 1 is nothing but R t ln p by f, delta G bar 2. is integration p goes to integration the lower limit is p and upper limit is p goes to 0 v bar d p prime and for delta g bar 3 you can write p goes to 0 to p r t by p prime d p prime. So, we can further simplify this as R t ln p by f like this. Okay. So, we get ln p by f. So, we get ln p by f equals to limit goes from 0 to p 1 by p prime minus v bar by r t d p prime right. Or we can write ln f by p nothing but 0 to p v bar by r t minus 1 by p prime or d p prime. Okay. Now, if and we can say this is our equation number 3, this is our equation number 3. Now, if p b and T or the equation of state for a real gas unknown we can calculate f by p for the gas at any pressure and temperature right. So, if we if we if we know p v and t are the equation of state for a real gas okay, 
we can calculate f by phi for the gas at any pressure and temperature. We will see one example. Okay, we will see. Here note that here it is to be noted noted that if the gas behaves ideally under the conditions of interest okay, that is if V bar is nothing but V bar ideal okay. in equation 3 in equation 3. Then a by p is 1 okay. or you can write ln a by p equals to 0. So, it says a f equals to p. Okay. Okay, so, we can say that or it says that that the extent of the deviation of from unity is a direct indication of the extent of the deviation of the gas from ideal behavior. Okay. So, f by p goes to 1 in when gas behaves ideally and the deviation or extent of deviation from f by p extension or the extent of deviation of f by p from unity is direct indication of the extent of the deviation of the gas from ideal behavior. Right? Okay. The ratio f by p equals to we can say gamma. Okay, we can define it. So, f by 2 is gamma we define it and this gamma is known as fugacity coefficient. Okay, so, gamma equals to 1 as we just dis discussed gamma equals to 1 for ideal gas right. Okay. Now, from equation so, from equation 3, you can write ln gamma R A. So, from equation 3, you can write ln gamma is integration 0 to p z minus 1 by p prime d p prime. So, this is our equation suppose 4, this is equation number 4, where z prime sorry, where z, z is nothing but p v bar by r t and you know z is compressibility factor. Now, we, we will consider one example. So, we will derive next 
we will derive an expression for the fugacity of a gas that obeys the equation of state P V bar minus B is at T. Okay, so, we will consider one equation of gas equation of state P V bar minus B equals to R T and we will derive the expression for fugacity. And in this equation, B is a constant term, B is a constant. Now, how do we do it? Okay. So, we know as, as the equation says P V bar minus B gives a T or we can write V bar is R t by p plus b. Okay. And we know expression of fugacity, we know ln gamma is integration 0 to p v bar by R t minus 1 by p prime d p prime. right? Now, we will substitute the value of V bar here from the gas equation of state. So, we can further simplify this as ln gamma is integration goes from 0 to p, we can write 1 by R t times R t by p prime plus b this is the first term minus 1 by p prime, this is the second term b p prime. Okay. So, what we get? We get ln gamma is nothing but integration 0 to p, integration 0 to p d p prime by p prime first term and then we get b by r t 0 to p d p prime minus 0 to p d p prime by p prime. Okay. So, we get ln gamma is nothing but b by r t 0 to p d p prime huh? or you can write ln gamma is b p by r t or it says gamma is e to the b p by r t. Okay. So, we can calculate fugacity okay, for a gas which obeys the equation of state p v bar minus b equals to R t. Now, we will come back again and we will consider thermodynamics of mixing for perfect gas or ideal gas. Previously, we have calculated the entropy of mixing for ideal gas. Okay. Today, we will calculate basically free energy of mixing and then we will also calculate delta H mixing, delta V mixing for ideal gas. Okay. So, we will consider the following experiment.
Okay, so, we have gas A here in this left hand side container and gas B there in the right hand side container and they there is a stop cock there and then pressure of this left hand side container is uh, P and T pressure and temperature are P and P and T and here also P and T temperature and pressures. Okay. If you if you remove the stop cock, so this is our initial state. And if we remove the stop cock, we, we get like this. So the gas molecules they will mix with each other. Okay. So we guess gas A here. A gas plus B gas, both are here A gas and B gas. Okay. So, what is the Gibbs free energy of the initial state? Okay. Suppose we have a, a number of moles of gas A. Okay. So, we can write N A times mu A naught plus R T L n P, this is for gas A and N B So, how we are getting this expression? So, N A as I said N A is the number of moles. So, number of moles of gas A and N B is number of moles of gas B and mu naught A and mu naught B are the chemical potential or standard chemical potential of gas A and gas B respectively. Okay. And we are getting this equation from like this. So, G i is G a plus G b is initial, initial state. So, this is initial state for initial state. And we have derived that G is nothing but, G is nothing but n times mu n times mu we already discussed and mu is nothing but mu naught plus r t l n p. So, we, we, we use this these expressions to calculate g i and then if we substitute g a by n a times mu naught a plus r t l n p and g b by n b times mu naught b plus r t l n p we get that equation. So, what is the final state? What is the free energy of the final state? Okay. So, after mixing, so after mixing if we say free energy change of the final state G f can write G f as N a times mu naught a plus R T L N P A plus N B times mu naught B plus R T L N P B. So, what is P A and what is P B? So, P A and P B are are partial pressures of gas A and gas B respectively. Okay. So, and if we now calculate delta G mix which is nothing but 
g of final state minus g of initial state. So, we can write n a r t l n p a plus n b r t l n p b minus n a r t l n p minus n b r t l n p right. So, we can write delta g makes is n a r t l n p a by p plus n b r t l n p b by p. Okay. And if we further simplify this one, we get delta g makes is nothing but x a l a r t x a r t or rather a n r t rather we can say. Okay. So, we can write a n r t x a l n x a plus plus a n r t. So, we can write delta g mix is a n r t x a x a l n x a plus a n r t x b l n x b. Okay. But x a and x b are the x a and x b are the mole fraction of gas A A and gas B respectively. So, what we got? We got delta G mix is nothing but a n r t sum over i x i l n x i. Now, since x i is, is fraction, so since x i is less than 1 or fraction. So, delta G mix is negative. Okay. So, and we know delta S mix is minus D del J mix by del T. at constant pressure and number of moles. Okay. So, from there we can also write delta S mix x minus n r sum over i x i l n x i. Okay. This is positive. Okay, so, the entropy of mixing is a positive quantity okay, that we already uh, derived before. So, what about delta H mixing? So, delta H mixing is nothing but delta G mixing plus T times delta S mixing, right? Because we know delta G is nothing but delta H minus T delta S. So, we get delta H mixing is what is delta G mixing? We just got it n r t sum over i x i l n x i and we have T times what is delta S mixing? Delta S mixing is minus n r 
sum over i x i ln x i. Okay. So, we get delta is mixing equals to delta is mixing equals to 0. It is expected right because there is no interaction between the particles. Okay. So, the in the enthalpy change. So, the enthalpy change is 0 right enthalpy change of mixing rather enthalpy change of mixing of mixing for ideal gas is 0. As, ex as should be expected for a system in which there are no interactions. between the particles. Okay. So, delta H mixing is 0 for ideal gas and this is expected because there are no there are no forces of or there is no interaction between the particles. Therefore, we can write therefore, the whole of the driving force for mixing of two ideal gases. In this case, we consider gas A and gas B comes from the increase of entropy of the system. Okay. So, in other words we can write ideal gas ideal gases mix solely on account of their tendency to spread into the total volume made available by opening the partition between the two containers. So, in other words ideal gases they mix solely on account of their tendency to spread into the total volume made available by opening the partition between the two containers. Okay. Now, what is delta V mixing? Okay. Now, next question is what is delta V mixing for ideal gases. Okay. This is our next question. Okay. We can very easily calculate delta V mixing like because, because we have already derived this expression. 
like this. Okay. So, we have already derived that del G by del P at constant temperature and here number of moles constant is V. Okay. So, we can write D del G mix by del P at constant temperature and number of moles is delta V mix. And what is delta G mix? So, delta G mix, if we go back and check it, it is okay, we find that delta since delta G mix, since delta G mix is independent of pressure. So, delta V mix is 0, right. So, delta V mixing for ideal gases is 0. What about delta X mixing? Next question is what is delta U mixing for ideal gas? Okay, so, we know delta H mixing is nothing but delta U mixing plus P delta V mixing. Right? So, you can write delta U mixing is nothing but delta H mixing minus P delta V mixing. And since delta H mixing is 0 as well as delta V mixing is also 0. So, delta U mixing is 0. So, delta U mixing is 0 as delta H mixing for ideal gas is 0 and delta V mixing for ideal gas is 0. Okay. So, what we find? We find that there is no change of internal energy on mixing of ideal gases, right. So, we find that there is no change of internal energy on mixing of ideal gases. In case of real gas, so in real gas there are interaction between the particles. So, in case of real gas, usually delta H mixing is a non-zero quantity. Okay, is not zero. Okay, in general, for 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 real gases, delta H mixing is is not zero. As delta H mixing is positive, but not by the amount of minus delta G mixing by T. Okay. If you go back and check it, okay. so we got delta H mixing is 0, because, because delta G mixing and T times delta G, delta H mixing they are cancelling, they are cancelling each other, these two terms. Okay. But for real gases, delta H mixing is not equal to 0, because we know delta H mixing is positive, but, but it is it's different from the, the amount is different from that of delta G mixing by T. Okay. In, in case of real gases, 
delta G mixing depends on the pressure right because it is affected by intermolecular forces. Okay. So, in case of real gases delta G mixing depends on the pressure because it is affected by intermolecular forces. Okay. Next we will consider why some liquids mix. Okay. So, ideal solution is nothing but very similar to we can treat ideal solution very similar to that of perfect gas similar to perfect gas. But remember one thing in ideal solution okay, particles they interact, but in case of perfect gas or ideal gas perfect or ideal gas there is no forces of interaction between the particles. Okay. Now, delta G as we know A naught T sum over I x i l n x i. Okay. Now, if we plot Okay, like this, this is mole fraction of suppose x a, we have a and b particles. Okay. So, for in case of ideal gas or ideal solution, we have like this. So, they so delta is mixed by N r and delta uh, uh, H delta G mixed by N r T they cancel each other and that gives you delta H mixing is mixing is 0. Okay. So, so this is delta H mixing by N r T. Okay. And we already know that delta S mixing is positive delta H mixing is 0 and delta G mixing is negative. You already got this. Okay. Now, if delta H is positive and large then it may overcome the entropy change. And as a consequence, delta G may be positive. for the mixing process. Okay. In when delta H is positive and very large and it sometimes it may overcome the entropy change, entropy change of mixing. As a result delta H mixing may be positive. So, for this kind of mixing process delta G is, is uh, uh, positive. So, so, in that case unmixing you would say unmixing unmixing is then spontaneous. And if A and B they are liquids then the liquids are immiscible. Okay. 
So, then they the, those liquid they will not mix with each other. Okay. So, there must be some balance between delta H and T delta S okay, in order to uh, say the mixing process is a spontaneous one or not. Thank you.